Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video, we will be discussing part 2 of modeling latent growth curves with OpenMX. Specifically, we will be modeling exponential growth. Standard linear growth curves are useful when we have data as seen here. In a previous video, we modeled this system with a latent growth curve, the model that you see here. This latent growth curve is useful for modeling linear growth. When we use this model on our data, we got the average fit line that you see here. This fit line, or trend line, seems to describe our data fairly well. However, many growth patterns in nature are not linear. In fact, quadratic, or exponential growth, is quite common. As you can see, there is an upward curve to this data. Thus, if we wanted to fit a trend line, it should look something like this. As you can see, the trend line also curves upward along with the data. To model this curvature in the framework of structural equation modeling, we have to move past our standard growth curve by adding one more latent variable. This new latent variable, which we will call C for curve, introduces a quadratic or exponential term to the model. All the parts from the linear growth curve are still there though. We still have a latent intercept term with loadings fixed to 1, and a latent slope with linearly increasing loadings. What is new, however, is the curvature parameter. This parameter models the exponential growth component of our model. The loadings from this latent variable to the manifest variables are also fixed. Instead of being linear, however, they are the square of the loadings for the slope term. In this way, we are able to estimate quadratic or exponential effects. Now let's try this in OpenMX. First, we load OpenMX, and then read in our data and look at a summary. Unlike the previous video, the means of these variables do not seem to be increasing linearly. This might justify using a model with a curvature parameter. Next, we define our latent and manifest variables, and now we can begin to estimate our model. The data for this model was generated with these parameters, an average latent intercept of 10, an average latent slope of 3, and an average curvature parameter of 5. Let's see if our model can recover these parameters. Let's make a new model called LGC Curve, and it's going to be a RAM-type model. We'll also load in our manifest and latent variables. Just like with the linear latent growth curve, we have a latent intercept term with fixed loadings to 1, and we have a latent slope term with fixed loadings to increase linearly starting at 0. What is new is this C term, our curvature parameter, and its loadings are fixed to be the square of the loadings of the slope term. This allows us to estimate the exponential component of our data. We then model the variance of our three latent variables, and then model the three covariance paths between our latent variables. Next, we estimate the measurement error of our manifest variables. Notice here that I have fixed each of the errors to be the same. I have done this by giving them the same label. This is a common method in latent growth curve analysis. The rationale is that as this is the same variable being measured over time, it should have identical measurement error at each point. By assuming equal measurement error, we now have less parameters for which we need to estimate in our model. Next, we model our means paths and close with a data statement. Now let's run and inspect this model. We notice that we have our single measurement error parameter, and we also have estimates for our average intercept, slope, and curvature terms. Comparing these values with the values used for the data simulation shows that this model did a very good job of picking up the underlying parameters. We can then test the significance of these parameters just like we have in previous videos. That is, we can create submodels with certain parameters set to zero, and then test the fit of these submodels against our original model. 
In doing this, it appears that our original model with the curvature parameter is the best model of the three here. This concludes this section of latent growth curve modeling. Thanks for watching.